Hello there. I did say I'd uh, do a quick video on the MSI SDR using SDR console, which is my preferred SDR software. So I've got SDR console already installed on this machine. I've been running it with my uh, ELAD uh, FDMS2 SDR receiver, as well as uh, from time to time the SDR Play RSP1A that I have. Let's try it with the MSI dongle. So I'm going to open up SDR console in the normal way. And uh, there it is. Now you'll notice that we've got um, a choice of SDR receivers already that we can uh, we can open. We've got um, an RTL uh, dongle. The RTL dongles are a little bit of a challenge to get working on SDR console. Uh, you can see this is, uh, I've got one installed here, but it's not working quite as it should actually. There's the ELAD, uh, the FDMS2, which is uh, my main and, and best SDR receiver, if you like. And of course, we've got the RSP1A that I mentioned earlier. Um, but we need to now install the MSI SDR, which thinks it's an SDR Play RSP1, not a 1A. So in SDR console, we need to go to the definitions tab here. We haven't got the um, MSI SDR in this list. It thinks it's an RSP1, as I've said, rather than a 1A. Let's go to the definitions tab. And uh, we get this window. And what we want to do is we want to search for the MSI SDR. Let's click on the search button. As I say, we go to SDR Play. Now, because it thinks it's an RSP1, which is a fairly old SDR Play device, we've got a choice of version 2 or version 3. I'm going to go for version 2, see if it finds it. And indeed, it's found one device. So we want to add that definition to the list. Save here. And you'll now see, lo and behold, on our select radio list, as well as the RSP1A we had before, we've now got an RSP1. I'm going to select the RSP1, like that. See, we've got a choice of bandwidths here. And we could look at uh, these, you know, up to 10 megs, up to 10 megs. Let's go, to, let's go for 3 megahertz. RSP1 again. Let's start it and see what happens. And great, we're up and running. So we're on BBC Radio 4 here. You know, you you may look at this display and not like it. I vastly prefer this layout to um, SDR Uno. Let's change the colouring a little bit there. Um, similar to SDR Uno, we can change frequency up and down uh, using the wheeled mouse and just just like that. And we go to uh, let's go to 49 meters again. We can just uh, change those. Uh, we can look at the display quite easily, see what's going on. We can zoom in and out to the, um, the scale of it. So we're looking at 3 megahertz of bandwidth now, and we can uh, we zoom right out. You can see we're starting at 4, 8, almost up to uh, 7, 7, 8, and everything in between. Let's go to the 19 uh, meter band. Back up a little bit and let's, let's zoom in a little. See if we can see any signals here. Something on 15825, I think. Let's turn the volume up a little. Got various preset bandwidth, just like SDR. You know, we can select 5 kilohertz bandwidth. 5.58. We can set our own. If we zoom in a little. You can see we can simply drag and open up the filters as we wish. Let's get to um, 16 meter band super many signals. It's constantly very, very poor to do. There's something. Something 720. 
and <laughs> it's just dropped straight out. Let's go to uh, let's go to the third one. See if we've got anything going. Let's zoom up, got the noise I want to do. So, it's easy to zoom in and out to look at the entire bandwidth with this. Okay. We've got something as AM yeah, we can switch into. It's easy to I just find the display looks a lot cleaner. Let's uh, see if we can do a little bit of SSB. There's 120 meters. Still be some in here. She seems very good today. Let's have a little look at some CW. Yeah. Okay, we can zoom right into that CW signal. You see, we're a little bit off frequency there. There you go. And we can narrow. We can narrow that filter right down. So that's SDI Uno, you know, it's a very quick look at it, um, but you may or may not see why I prefer it. You've got various noise reduction modes built into SDI Uno, you know, various settings, different types of noise reduction that you can try. You've got an auto notch filter, you've got squelch, and so on. So worth having a look. Now, you see we've got a bandwidth selected up here. Let's switch to the, uh, we'll have to restart the radio, let's switch to the entire, the, the biggest slice we can look at 10 megahertz. Let's have a look at so uh, here is the um, MSI now, we're looking at uh, 10 megahertz of bandwidth, I'll just zoom out to show you. Just happen to be on, uh, on 10 megahertz uh, dead on the uh, VHF uh, spectrum. And, uh, let's just change the colour scheme a little bit there. Um, if we Zoom right out. Um, now, of course, when we're talking about 10 megahertz, that's whatever center frequency we're on is 5 megahertz down and 5 megahertz up. So, if 10 is at the center, you can see we're looking down to 5. Or we're looking up to uh, 15 on the right hand part of the scale. Um, you can see immediately where the activity is. We've got the 31 meter broadcast band there. We've got the 41 meter broadcast band here. Um, so we could click within um, 31 meters. And let's see if we can find the uh, noise and find any signals here. And just zoom in. So we can actually see where we are on the band. And, uh, Okay, so so say we can obviously alter the uh, center frequency that we're on. Um, we can, using SDR console, we can record it now at a 10 megahertz uh, slot of spectrum for however long we've got disk um, the disk capacity for. It is quite resource intensive in terms of uh, storage. 
Um, let me just zoom right out. You can see as we've moved up to 11, yeah, we now got 7.5 uh, at the bottom end and 16.5 at the top end. And as we just keep moving down, um, I'll just send the display again. And you'll see now we're looking for, um, if we come down a little bit further, we look now. We get in the of the medium wave band, I'll just send the display. And you can see now that uh, on the spectrum display we've got the uh, the medium wave band right here, on the left hand side. And we've got the uh, 49 meter short wave band right here. 41 meter, we can right at the bottom end of the 31 meter uh, band. So that's quite a, a chunk of spectrum we're able to look at. And for what is uh, a low cost device, I think it's, uh, it's a useful introduction to uh, the world of uh, SDRs. And uh, you could have a lot and of fun with this. The performance is the better than the RTL dongle, less imaging problems, uh, less overload. And you've got a much bigger chunk of spectrum potentially. The SDR dongle will do about 2 megs of spectrum. As you can see, this is running 10. Um, it does require a reasonably fast PC. This is um, an Intel i5 with, I think it's 16 meg of RAM. Uh, and if you look at the bottom of SDR console here, you can see we're on 40% um, uh, uh, CPU, and it's also using the graphics card processing. It's driving the graphics card quite hard, but part of the reason the graphics card is working so hard is I've got the, um, the recording, screen recording software running. If I was to turn that off, that GPU percentage uh, there would drop a lot. But just to give you an idea, the MSI is, you know, with a reasonable PC, it'll give you a good chance chunk of HF spectrum to look at and thank you for watching. Batman and Robin running in front as it goes round about. <laughs>